Hey family, I wanted to record this really quickly because I get a lot of questions about tools. Um, what tools am I using? What tools do I like? All of that good stuff. And I realize I don't talk about tools that often and that's by design. Um, if you really wanna know, it's because tools can be a distraction. They can be a rabbit hole. And I find that sometimes people get stuck trying to pick a tool for weeks, months, or years even. But it's high time that I share a little bit about my tools that I use day to day with you. So let's jump in. This first tool that is pretty much outside of Slack, this is the tool that I use the most, and that is Notion. So if you're not familiar with Notion, just a quick high level, Notion, and this is my, the way I describe Notion, Notion is a knowledge management tool. What that means is it excels at managing information like processes, documents, templates, um, just, you know, notes, um, notes. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, so that's, that's what it, it's great for. It's also a relational database which means, you know, if you're familiar with databases, databases are great, except when you want different databases to talk together. And nowadays there's a, a couple of great relational database tools that do allow your information to talk together, to talk to each other. Notion is one of them and Airtable is another one, which is also a tool that I use, but I won't go into that one in this video. Um, so with Notion, the way that that comes into play, the reason I started using Notion is because I was using Asana for project management. And I found that while I love Asana, especially it's, it's a free tool, it's so powerful. However, I found that with Asana, it was hard for me. I was using Asana and I was using Google Docs to manage information. And I realized I was using Asana, I was putting things in Asana that weren't projects, right? Asana is a project management tool. But if I had something, a link that I wanted to remember, I would put it in Asana. Um, if I had a, a, a personal project that didn't, it was, didn't really have a date, it was just kind of a few tasks, I would put it in Asana. In other words, I wasn't using Asana effectively. Also, using Asana forced me to think in terms of individual projects. And I wasn't, it was hard for me to have a high level view of everything that was going on in my business. So I wanted to have a tool that allowed me to connect everything together. And that's where Notion came in. I also wanted to get rid of Google Docs. Like literally, that was one of the first things I said to uh, the person I hired to help me set up Notion. I hate Google Docs. <laughs> I hate it with a passion. So I wanted to stop using it because I could never find anything. And that's the power of Notion. It's so searchable um, because it al allows you to set up relational databases. You can easily connect things to each other and find things. I don't have the same frustrations that I had with Google Docs with just masses of documents and I, who knows where they are. Anyway, now I don't use Google Docs anymore. I rarely use Asana. I might hop into Asana once every two weeks. And that's just for a quick second and I'm back out. We're, we're going to get away from Asana. So enough about that. Here is a, um, this is what I call my weekly dash. Every week I come in here and I just kind of set up my focus for the week. So normally this metadata up here is filled out. So this is what I mean by, this is a database actually. So um, I have my dates, but the rest of these fields are based on the goals that I've set for the month. So these auto populate normally. And so I have um, my goals, what I'm working on for the quarter. My goals are quarterly. Um, and then I have my measurables, which is how I'm, I know I'll meet the goals, usually numbers like, you know, 10% uh, opt-in rate or something like that. Uh, and then I have my rocks, which are the things that I need to do 
in order to achieve my goals, objectives, basically. So these are normally all filled in for the week because they're pulled in automatically. And then I can link projects in here as well so that I, I actually just added this property so that I can see on a, you know, on a weekly basis, I could come in here and see, okay, these are the, the projects that I'm working on for the week, which is amazing. You know, it's all together. And then I come in, I usually start by doing something I call my REST, um, which stands for reflection and strategy. And feel free to steal that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I come in here and I usually will set up a new one. I'll, I actually have one up here that's a new one set up for this. And basically it's a chance for me to just debrief and just let everything out to reflect, to, um, to see patterns, which has been super helpful. Uh, so I just kind of ask myself these questions. I do this every Sunday morning. What went well, what didn't I accomplish? What did I learn? What's my, my biggest obstacle and so on. And it just helps me to really get stuff out. Um, also, it helps me to see what I need to work on in order to get where I want to go, right? So the other thing that I do is I come in and I review my numbers. Every week I, I review my metrics and I have a link to my metrics spreadsheet and I look at my projects and I see like, okay, what am I working on? What are the next actions? What um, do I have clear objectives set inside of the project? All of that good stuff. I update my calendar. I usually block out days. I have dedicated meeting days and dedicated work days. So I will update my calendar accordingly. And then these last three are, um, I stole this from Marie Poulin. So just processing any ideas that I might have. Um, this is one that I recently asked, uh, added, and which is just, what do I need help with? And just making sure that I'm being mindful to ask for help right? And being honest with myself. And then finalizing and clearing, which is just, are there any papers on my desk that I need to go through? Uh, inbox, <laughs> let's be honest, my inbox is not clear, but it's nice to have. Um, and so, yeah, just doing all of these actions for my weekly review. So I do that. And then I come in here and I set up. And the nice thing about this is this, this is a template. So this will all of this stuff that you see will auto populate every single time I set up a new uh, weekly dash. So I will come in here and I'll set up my focus goals, no more than five goals that I'm focused on for the week. Uh, I've already outlined them in my, in my weekly rest. And then this high level is really my replacement for Asana. So I like to add my objectives for the day here. And it just, I can, you know, mark things complete. If you see this, I could mark rest complete and then it's done. Um, I can, you know, easily add something new and I can move things from day to day. So it's just, it's just a great way for me to see everything going on in my week. So that's how, um, that's how I use Notion on a weekly basis, just to see how my workspace is organized. I use the para method. So projects, areas, resources, archive is what PARA stands for. I'm not an expert on it, but I really love, if we go, um, you can kind of see one of the challenges that, that I mentioned with Asana, it was just having a hard time seeing everything connected, or maybe I have all of those notes. Like I used to have all of these notes inside of Google Docs, right? And now it's everything is in one space. And I can come in here and I can see, go into editorial, like we've got our content calendars, we've got ideas, we've got, we just can keep track of everything and have it in one place. So I'm not gonna go through everything, but I absolutely love Notion. I use it every single day. It's the first thing that I check in the day and the last thing that I do. The other reason I love Notion is because there's a huge community around. So this is the Notion template gallery. And so if you're not familiar with Notion, you can come here and you can find templates that help you to set up your workspace. So 
these templates are created by Notion and some are created by Notion users, which is absolutely great. You can just come in here, find what you need and get set up. Example of just kind of continuing that. There's also people who are, you know, creating tools, not just templates for Notion. So this is an example of someone who's creating forms for Notion. And I don't know if it's live yet. Yeah, it's in beta. But I just found this today and I thought this is so cool. So if you're using maybe Typeform um, or, you know, another for your forms, you could tentatively use something like this and not have to use that anymore. So, you know, I just love Notion. There's so much I could say, but I'm going to stop there. Check it out. The other tool that I use day in and day out is Slack. Slack is where all of the communication with my, uh, my virtual assistant, my podcast editor, any freelancers that I'm working with, um, anyone that I hire, but also my clients take place. It's, for me, it is a, a huge benefit to have my communication in Slack and keep it out of the inbox. It's just so easy to lose things in the inbox. So anytime I kick off a new client project, I set up a Slack channel for that project. And that's pretty much it. If you're familiar with Slack, you already know how it works. If you're not, check it out, slack.com. Um, I love Slack, it's just, it's just so great. I can see what's happening on my computer, on my phone, whatever, and not have to worry about my inbox exploding. So let's talk about uh, another tool that I absolutely love, which is Dubsado. So Dubsado, let me just explain what Dubsado is. It is, because it's, you could describe it as a CRM or client relationship management is what I think it stands for. But it's really what they say here, it's a business management tool. Because Dubsado allows you to set up forms, um, intake forms. So let's, it's probably better for me to explain why I started using Dubsado. I needed, uh, I realized that when I had a new client project, I was doing a lot of the same tasks over and over and over. I was doing them manually. And it was just a time suck. Every time I had a, a new client, I would just get stressed out because I had to, you know, send out these emails. I had to put together a proposal. I had to figure out, okay, check my invoice tool. I had to set, set up the new invoice. And I was like, there has to be a better way. And there was. So Dubsado now handles all of that for me. Um, just like with Notion, I started using it and then I realized I need a professional to set this up. So I hired someone to optimize my workflows. And the great thing about this, let me take a step back and say, I wouldn't have known how to use Dubsado unless I had gone through the stress of doing everything manually first. You need to know what your processes are first. And, and so once I hired someone, I could say, this is what I need set up. And that's what we have. So with Dubsado, you can automate your client intake. So right now, if you go to my marketing audit application page, there's a form here. This is run by Dubsado. And when once this form is filled out, it pings Dubsado, Dubsado notifies me, and it also starts a workflow. So Dubsado handles all of the communication. It sends out the email, it tracks what the, the prospect has done once they move to um, become a client. You know, it'll send out the email with the invoice and the contract, it handles the contracts, it handles the invoicing, it handles the emails, it handles the scheduling, it, it just does everything. And it saves me so much time. Um, the most that I have to do is maybe go in um, and say, yes, I want you to send, because there are certain items that I want to approve before it sends. And that's just how I have it set up. So if you're not familiar with Dubsado, Highly, highly recommend to check it out. If you find that you have, I'm a big fan of simplicity. 
So I don't want, I don't want to have five tools to do one thing. So if you find that you're using, you know, an invoicing tool, a separate invoicing tool, a tool for contracts, a tool for forms, a tool for check out Dubsado. So as far as pricing is concerned, it's $35 a month or three fifty dollars a year, you know, one client, you can, it pays for itself. So definitely check it out and give it a test drive. I think they have a free trial. I love, love, love Dubsado. Of course, I use and love Thinkific. Um, not a whole lot to say here other than Thinkific, I've, I've reviewed almost every course platform out there. So for the hosted course platforms, which are the ones that are not WordPress plugins, Thinkific has the best learning features out of all of them, hands down. Uh, the only area for improvement as far as Thinkific is concerned is design. Um, and they have made huge gains in that area compared with where they were, you know, three to five years ago. They, it just, it looks so much cleaner. Uh, I still do not use landing pages, Thinkific landing pages. I use lead pages. So that's just something to keep in mind. But everything else, as far as the, the depth, of the analytics and the learning features you get with Thinkific, I highly, highly recommend them. So it's what I use for my courses. Um, not a whole lot else to say. I'm not gonna, this isn't a review, but definitely check it out. Uh, I do have a review on my YouTube channel. So if you're looking for one, you can check that out. Okay, so for client meetings, for any one-on-one -on -one meeting. So when I meet with clients or when I meet with my virtual assistant, I'm going to use Zoom. Um, every now and then I'll use Zoom for a training or a Q&A, but my preference for trainings, workshops, webinars, Q&As, anything where I'm inviting a crowd is going to be Crowdcast. So if you're not familiar with Crowdcast, definitely check it out. If you're looking for a tool that's going to allow you to um, host webinars that's going to allow you to broadcast or live stream video. If you're looking for something that's going to allow you to uh, have free and paid events, do virtual summits or conferences, Crowdcast is the solution. Um, it just does everything really well. Great team behind it. Um, the engagement features so one of the things I love about Crowdcast is the time-stamped Q&A. So if someone asks a question, you can click as the host, you click when you start to answer that question, and then you click when you stop. And then when people watch the replay and they see that question, they go, oh, I have that question too. They can click the button and jump to that point in the video. That's just amazing. I, that's one of my favorite features. Um, you can replace your recordings, you can download your recordings, it integrates with so many different tools that you use as an entrepreneur, ConvertKit, Typeform, Drip. So Crowdcast is what I use if I'm doing any type of, I do it, use it for live podcasts. I just, yes. So for writing, I use an app called Ulysses. This is an app that was recommended to me on Twitter, I think, and I checked it out and I immediately fell in love with it. So I have it open right now. Here is um, a newsletter post that I'm about to send out. There's, look at it, it's just beautiful. I just come in here and I write. I don't fight with the interface. I don't get distracted, I just write. And I find that it's easier for me to write. Um, I can get my thoughts out more clearly. I just love it. It's almost like a, a digital notepad. It also supports Markdown. So if you use a Markdown editor and you're looking for that, you can do that. And I think you can export to WordPress. I don't use WordPress, but I believe that there's a bunch of features that you can use. I just use it for writing and then I literally copy and paste it into um, wherever I'm publishing. So Ulysses is my writing tool of choice. And then last one is Zapier. So if you're not familiar with Zapier, um, Zapier allows you to automate, to automate your workflows. And what that means is it basically allows your tools to talk to each other. It helps your tool, enables your, that's the word I'm looking for, your tools to talk to each other. 
Sometimes you'll have tools that don't have a direct integration with each other and you need Zapier to make them communicate. So um, basically you determine what the trigger is and then you have actions that, that happen once that trigger is set. I use Zapier so much I couldn't even tell you. I've, I've probably got like 20 Zaps set up. So it's, it's, in my opinion, it's absolutely essential to online business. Um, they've got a great free plan, which is what I have used for years. I just started paying for Zapier like six months ago. So check it out if you're not using it and you're looking for a way to make your tools talk to, to each other, Zapier is the way to go. So that's it. That's Those are the tools that I use. I hope that this has been helpful and um, given you some ideas. Let me know what tools you're using in your business. Thanks for watching.